Oh, I can't even move it when it's like that. Hold up. Properties. Okay. Streamlabs has like everything kind of arranged weird. They have like a slider for the font size, which is not what I'm used to. There we go. There's our war crime counter. Comic Sans is a war is the war crime spawn. Ah, uh, I mean, <laughs> shit. <laughs> As a graphic design major, I'm I'm legally obligated to cringe at Comic Sans because it's such an overused font. Uh, so we are going to make the war. Yeah, there it is. So impact is going to be the number, and the war crime counter is going to be in Comic Sans. Just because I gotta get this nice and understandable. Yeah. It's because, like, Comic Sans, when it first became super popular, was not because of Undertale. It was actually, like, I want to say early 2000s. Uh, I, I want to say early to late 2000s. Um, it was definitely before the 2010s. I know that. But, uh, Comic Sans is super popular, and, like, almost everyone was using it for their marketing material. But because... Graphic designer, well, no, I won't say graphic designer, but some companies are still using it in their marketing material, and now it's seen more as an ironic joke as opposed to something that is like for a serious business. So, in the graphic design community, Comic Sans is seen as one of those things where it's like, oh, you ironically use Comic Sans, like, you're not actually going to put that on something you mean to like be serious about like i'm not going to advertise something with comic sans because it's the lazy route because everyone was using it back in the day that people were lazy and were like oh just throw the font that everyone's using on it so comic sans has gotten this negative stigma in the graphic design community because everyone was using it so because of that uh you know it's now seen as incredible. What if you write all text in a comic in a comic about Sans? Okay, Toby Fox, Sans is uh like text when he's speaking in that comic is allowed to use Comic Sans because that's how it would be in the game, and that would be not laziness but putting forth more effort to make it more accurate to the material that that comic would have been based on. So, in that context, yes, I say use Comic Sans. But, in like, say if I was making a sign for, I'm gonna use, uh, in my hometown, there is a pizza place. Now, it's an old sign, you know what I mean? It was from like, early 20, 2000s. Uh, I almost said 2010s, no, it's early 2000s. Uh, that, si that sign has been there for as long as I can remember, and uh, I've lived there my entire life. So, you know, that, and it has Comic Sans on it, but it was made in a time period where Comic Sans was the common thing everyone was doing. So, in the graphic design community, when you see a more newer piece of, uh, you know, marketing material like a sign perhaps if it's obvious that it's new and it's not like an old piece like that pizza shop one it's basically showing like hey i don't give a shit about how i market my business and companies should give a shit about how they market their business because if they don't give a shit about how they market their business how are you going to guarantee that they even give a shit about their business in general how can you guarantee that that pizza isn't going to taste like shit? You know what I mean? Like, that's the mentality that I have, you know, going in. So, like, if I see a company, like, I go to a pizza place that just opened up, right? They just opened up, and their sign has Comic Sans. I'm walking away. Because that's telling me, as a graphic designer, that's telling me that that business does not give two shits about how they market their business. And if you know anything about business, marketing is almost everything.
But what if they wrote under the sign LMAO Comic Sans? Okay, at that point, they just hired a troll. <laughs> they hired a troll as a graphic designer. And that shit's funny. Um, and I guess it would be kind of self-aware humor. I guess if the sign was temporary, I could see that. Because if the sign was temporary, uh, they w it would be kind of meta humor, which I would respect. Because in that sense, they're still kind of like, hey, we didn't mean to use this like Comic Sans in an unironic uh, context. So they, they meant to use it ironically. So that's why when it comes to Comic Sans, if it's used ironically, perfectly fine. You know what I mean? It's a funny font. I'll give it that. The font is kind of funny. But, you know, if... If you're using it unironically to promote a business, you're you're telling everyone who knows the story about Comic Sans, hey, I don't give two shits about my business, and you're losing customers that way. So that's kind of why in the graphic design community, if you ever, like, you know, meet up with a graphic designer, they'll probably tell you that. Like, they'll say, like, yeah, you know... Comic Sans is often very looked down upon in the graphic design community just because of how overused it was. But again, if it's used ironically, um, it it is a very good font. It's perfect for an ironic purpose, and that's why it's perfect for a character like Sans in Undertale, because Sans is a joke character. He originally was supposed to be a joke character. So you give the joke character a joke font. It's funny, and it, it works. <laughs> and I love Toby Fox for doing that. It's a small little detail with the font choices that, like, no one knows about that. I feel like no one knows that. Like, no one knows, like, that the, the option to give Sans, Comic Sans, other than the fact that, you know, it matches his name. I don't know if he was named after the font or if he chose the, or if Toby Fox chose the font because Sans was named Sans. But like Sans is used to describe any font that uh, doesn't have a serif typically because Sans literally means without. So if something is Sans serif. So the, t uh, the font Comic Sans is a comic inspired font that is Sans serif. So a serif is like the like fancy things at the edge of the uh, the font. So like uh, there is not a good example on the screen right now. <laughs> uh, Impact is also a sans serif font. Um, all the fonts you see on the screen right now are all sans serif. Uh, well, actually, let me pull up a non sans serif font. I'm sorry, I get really passionate about graphic design. Graphic design is my passion, so just saying. All right, so let me pull up a, a serif font. This is Baskerville BT. So this is a serif font. All right, there you go. Oh, uh, where'd it, what the fuck, where'd it go? Huh? Hold up, I'm having technical difficulties here. Okay, it keeps grabbing the wrong thing. Okay, hold up. And then, okay, so that's what I, all right, I figured that out now, okay. So the content warning is still in place. Good, okay, so yeah. Uh, that is a serif font, it is Baskerville BT. Um, for those who want to know what this font is. Um, I mean, this is cool sans lore. Yeah, I am giving you sans lore right now. <laughs> Do you know if the similar story is behind Papyrus? Uh, kind of. Um, not exactly, because Comic Sans is a little bit more versatile. Papyrus was also overused and is also seen in the same light as uh comic sans is in the graphic design community but that's because papyrus uh was overused for anyone trying to make something that looked old so if there was like ever like an old document or something like that or like 
uh, it was often used for a like an just old writings and stuff like that. Papyrus was typically used in that because it looked handwritten, and it well one it was called papyrus, which was one of the first methods of making paper. So it has its roots in trying to look old, which is why papyrus is like that. But actually, hold on, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna pull up papyrus right here. So you can see what I'm talking about. Um, why does Streamlabs organize fonts this way? It's such a strange way of... Okay, so here's Papyrus. So Papyrus was typically used to... Uh, this is a serif font. <laughs> not anymore! Um, it is not. Papyrus is also a sans serif font. Oh, so then that fits with the papyrus. The character is trying to look official. Yeah, so it, that I like that too. Toby Fox is a genius when it comes to that stuff, and I love that because the papyrus font was typically used on like official things. Like uh, the amount of times I've seen like the Declaration of Independence, uh, I don't want to say transcribed, but typed up in a papyrus font trying to recreate that like old look that old official look um but yeah so again it's all incredible and again papyrus is also seen in the same light because it is overused within that context of anything that's trying to look old and official um but again that also perfectly describes papyrus because he is trying to look super official because he wants to be a knight uh, so that is, is it, is it a knight? I'm pretty sure he wants to be a knight. I don't know if there's a different term they use in Undertale. It's been a while since I played Undertale. But yeah, so if I, that's why I give an exception to the characters of Sans and Papyrus using such overused fonts because it fits like they, the font describes their character. Which is genius on Toby Fox's side. Either a soldier or just a cool dude. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I, I think he's... Well, soldiers were knights. Uh, knights were soldiers. Uh, 